If you've seen anything in your newsfeed about Airtable today, it's most likely about Airtable's monumental price changes that are going into effect. Now, in this video, we're going to take a look at who are the winners and the losers of those price changes because these are no small matters. These are not simply just a small increase of the price per user per month charges. This is, in fact, kind of a reconceptualization of how pricing and how plans work with inside of Airtable, and we're going to analyze that. Now, I do want to be sensitive because there are some people who say, wow, this is amazing. Airtable's finally heard me. I'm going to get access to features that were previously restricted more to the enterprise, and I'm so excited about this. And then there are others of you who are saying, I'm a small business owner, and suddenly my cost just doubled for Airtable, and I don't know if I can continue to use this platform. So I want to remain sensitive to both those groups because you're going to see a lot of mixed reactions amongst the community. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we're an Airtable implementation partner. Let's go ahead and get into the analysis. So all of the new pricing is now live at Airtable.com slash pricing. I'll have that link down below. And there's also a really helpful article that talks about the different changes and migration plans based on where you're currently at and where you need to go. So I'll make sure to share both of those in the description. I also just put together some information so you could maybe look at it through another lens. So right off the bat, we've got the Airtable pricing changes. There were four plans before. There are now four plans. First appearances, you might just assume, hey, these are just kind of a direct one-to-one -one mapping, but that's not really the case. We do still have the free and the enterprise kind of on the bookends here. Previously, we had the plus and the pro plans. Now we have team and business. Um, but as it stands, instead of plus being mapped to team, really plus is essentially being eliminated. There's really no plan with that set of features available at a similar price point. That's going away, which is going to be a lot of what we're talking about today. And then pro maps more to team, although you'll see that there's some change in features there, which we'll dig into. And the business plan is essentially a new offering, which I think is going to be attractive for a lot of people who were between that pro level, who were pushing to enterprise, but not at the enterprise level of commitment or size of organization. Now, the first winners are going to be those heavy users of the pro plan who are just about at that point of going to enterprise. But now some of those features are coming a little bit down market and less of a price point than enterprise. But you're still going to get a little bit of sticker shock here because you are going to be paying over double what you're paying today to be able to get these features. So your features are increasing. They're not decreasing, but you're going to pay to get it. And so if you have a decent sized budget or you're reallocating other costs because maybe you're moving more into Airtable, this is going to be a good fit for you. So right off the bat, you get increased number of records per base. This is a huge one for many, many organizations. 50,000 is simply not enough for many different groups. And so 50,000 up to 125,000 over doubling, awesome. Same thing with those automation runs, doubling from 50K to 100K provides a lot more flexibility in what you're building out in no-code automation. Increased storage size, these are all the main reasons that people were upgrading in the past. And so this provides that upwards momentum to be able to grow and to scale. Now, three sync integrations you now have available to all the standard sync integrations. You're not limited. Ten extensions per base, you now have access to all extensions. And then there's some other things that are less quantifiable, but are great new features. Probably the biggest one is going to be that two-way syncing of data. So instead of having just a one-way sync, now we can have it update on both ways. And I know there's a lot of people who are going to love that feature. We're going to make separate videos about each of these individual features. We're not going to spend too much time here but you're also going to get access to an increased revision history. You've got user groups, and so you've got better handling with permissions. Unlimited workspaces, so you're not constantly worrying about workspace management. There's really a lot of great things to be said if you can stomach the price increase from pro to business. Winner number two, I got to be honest, this is the biggest winner of them all. It's Airtable. I mean, honestly, since Airtable had their reorg and had layoffs last fall, the message has been completely clear. It's we are moving to the enterprise. And they're drawing that line in the sand and they're saying, hey, come on board to what we're becoming. And if we're not the right fit, we're not the right fit. And that's an understandable business move. They have higher margins this way. And so they're making that call. And so what this means is if you're on the plus plan and you're going to the team plan, discounts aside, which we'll talk about in a moment, that's doubling the revenue that they're going to get from your organization. If you are on the pro plan, and you're going to the business plan, 
That's over doubling the amount of revenue that they're going to get from your organization. And if you're on the plus plan or the free plan and you say, hey, we're a small business and this isn't the right fit for us, they'll happily say, hey, see you later. It's been great. There's other options that are available out there. This is a very calculated move. And so Airtable is saying, hey, we ran the numbers and this is what makes sense for us as we move forward organizationally. That if you fit into these buckets, we love it. But if you don't, that's okay. It's been a great run. But really, Airtable is going to come out of this as a winner and their enterprise clients are going to benefit from that. And they're going to continue to grow as an organization, just in a very different kind of way that many of us were used to in the past being a very freemium kind of driven product and people naturally upgrading. I think we're going to see Airtable shift from more of that product led sales motion to a sales led motion as they start to make this transition that it's going to be less about, oh, I just discovered this cool new Airtable thing. And then you get everybody on your team on board and be more about a dedicated approach to handling enterprise customers. The third winner that I see in this space is going to be other software vendors or competitors that are out there, as well as software tools that augment what Airtable is currently doing today. We're a SmartSuite implementation partner as well, and I think we're going to see that SmartSuite is going to continue to pick up market share from Airtable. The two aren't exactly the same, but there's enough crossover there that I think we're going to see that be a really viable option for a lot of the SMB customers. Next up, we have customer portal type tools like Stacker and Softer. These allow you to use Airtable as a back end, but instead of paying for a license for each individual user, you're scaling that up. So you could say, all of my customers can see the data without being paid users. Now, I can't predict the future, but I see this as a little bit of a short to midterm play. We see Airtable clamping down on their offering for the Airtable API. And so I see there being maybe some more tension or battles in the future about what people can access using Airtable as a backend if they're paying for other tools rather than paying for those licenses. Because at the end of the day, Airtable is probably going to want to keep more of that revenue for themselves. So I'm interested to see what that landscape looks like in the next couple of years here. Now, Softer and Stacker are available today, and we've done lots of implementations on those. And so I think this is going to be a really good viable option for people looking for other solutions that are there. And then I also think we're going to see more of a move into the no-code, low-code kind of space. Now, Airtable certainly is a no-code tool, but there has been such an explosion of other tools on the market. I'm hesitant to say which ones are going to be the winners in all of this, but I could see No Loco, who has both their own internal database offering. Stacker has that as well, so you're not always locked into Airtable. You might use it as a backend. You might use their own backend for it. I could see that happening. If you're going more towards the low code side and you're saying, hey, my company has some IT resources and we just want to be able to build our own interfaces and be able to do that with a tool that can support it. Retool is a really great option. It's a little bit more technical in nature, but lots of good configuration possibilities. And then I see Zapier Tables actually being a player that might come out of this and win. It's a little bit of a a candidate that I, I can't say for sure is going to be a winner in all of this, but given Zapier's market share and all of the new product features that they're releasing, I could see a world in which this becomes really successful, even though right now I wouldn't consider it like a direct competitor to Airtable. We talked about the winners. Now I'm going to talk about kind of the mixed bag, and that is where I would consider the enterprise scale or the enterprise plan. From here, you can see that there are going to be quite a few increase to those limits that we're used to. We're going from 250K to 500,000 records per base. I mean, this is the real meat and potatoes, being able to have increased limits. We're going to see more features around enterprise level security. I think as you've seen over the past few months, enterprise keeps getting all of the new features. We're starting to hear through the grapevine a little bit that pricing is going to increase. It sounds like about the $70 a user a month, and that's a lot to bite off. Now, we don't have the same level of pricing transparency here, so you're going to have to contact sales yourself based on the needs of your organization. But I think it's safe to say that probably that average deal size for an enterprise level plan is going to increase. Now, let's talk about the losers from the Airtable pricing changes. And I think the first one that my heart really goes out to is the average pro plan user. Now, if you take it at face value, the pro plan seems pretty well mapped to the team plan. It's the same pricing. You're like, good, we're, we're good to go. Not a lot changing here. But if you look behind the scenes a little bit, that's where some of these limitations pop up. So previously you had 50,000 automation runs a month. Now you're down to 25,000. So we're cutting that in half. We went from unlimited API calls. We're down to 100,000, which is still quite a few, but 
depending on what you're doing, if this is kind of your bread and butter platform that you're integrating everything to, you can chew through 100,000 pretty quickly. You've got the attachments per base cutting down from 20 gigabytes to 10 gigabytes. If you've been using syncing between different Airtable bases or between outside systems into Airtable, you previously had the ability to have multiple different data sources sync into a single table, which is really useful for a lot of people. But that is now being restricted. You no longer have access to that. Now it's just the one-to-one -one sync instead of the multiple syncs that were going on previously. So overall, my synopsis of this is that you are paying the same thing and now they're taking features away. And I think that's where the most heartache is oftentimes felt. You know, it's one thing if you're like, okay, well, you got to pay more for more features. But to say, hey, you're going to pay the same thing and we're going to take it away from you. I think that's where we're going to hear some of the angriest current users of Airtable out there. And so this is, you know, kind of tough place to be for the people who have more budget and they can go to that $54. That's an option. But there's going to be a lot of people who are really scrambling because suddenly doubling what they're paying uh, isn't an option for them. Next up, we have people who are on the plus plan. They were paying $12 a month and they're going to be migrated to team getting a discount. So they'll stay at their $12 a month and they'll get the increased team features. So on first sight, this is like, hey, pretty good deal. I keep my pricing and we keep going with the extra features. But that discount, I mean, I can say from working with many, many different SaaS companies, it's always going to get harder and harder over time. You make any kind of change to your plan, boom, you're done. You got to be on the new pricing structure. So we'll definitely see some people over time that stick to that plan and never change, but these things always change over time. And so really committing to being locked into that forever, I don't think is a viable plan for most businesses. So you can move to the team plan and receive that discount, but you can't change anything. Or in all honesty, I think these people are going to be finding another solution. Now, technically, could they skip it all and go to the business plan? Yeah, it's feasible. Could those folks downgrade to free? I mean, I really don't see it happening. Um, to say that you have been on a paid plan and suddenly can get to under a thousand records in a base, I just don't see that happening. And so this is the group that I see most likely looking for another solution because their needs aren't met by the current plan that they're on. There's not a great migration plan without paying a decent chunk of cash. And so you're really left to, hey, what other options are available for me out there? And then in terms of the free plan, hey, it's a free plan, so you really can't complain too much, but that attachment storage is going down. The number of records that you have is going from 1,200 to 1,000, which isn't a big shift, but that's not a lot of records. You had one sync integration, now you don't. You had one extension per base, now you don't. Now that extension, that included the scripting extension. And so I think there's a lot of individuals who are doing pretty creative things, having the ability to have scripting. And now you don't. Now I get it. You are on a free plan, so it really doesn't make a lot of difference to Airtable either way. But the free plan just really doesn't seem to offer kind of the oomph that it did previously. And that's where I do see that the product-led strategy of people just adopting the product on their own and telling their friends about it, I see being less of a thing here. I think it's really going to be more that sales-driven motion. And then the final thing is that those unlimited API calls go from unlimited down to 1,000. There's really not a whole lot you can do because 1,000 calls let's say that's 30 a day, really not a lot you can do, especially if you have automations that are utilizing multiple calls for every run that they do. So what do you think? Do you have other insights I might've missed? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions about getting up and running with Airtable, you can reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.